This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. We believe a home reflects what matters most. Let us design what matters most to you. You are listening to Good Living by Design, where beautiful and well-decorated spaces are created, making you love the space you're in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Good Living by Design. I'm Lenore Gonzalez, your host and owner of DNY Design Group. We believe that a home reflects what matters most, so we design what matters most to you. We create beautiful, well-decorated rooms that will make you love the space you're in. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. I am so happy that you're here and excited to jump right into our topic of how to organize every room in your home. Getting your house organized will go a long way to maximizing efficiency, not to mention the nice feeling it will bring you. There is no single right way to do it. The trick lies in finding what best works for you. Your house may look clean, But having piles neatly lined up on the counter does not mean that you're organized. If you find your flat surfaces filling with clutter, it's time to designate a spot for everything. Remember, everything in an organized home has a purpose and everything has a spot where they belong. So before we tackle tips for organizing your home, let's address clutter first. Maintaining a clutter-free house makes keeping it clean much easier. Have a designated drop-off areas for mail, keys, backpacks, and shoes. We often tell our clients as they start to declutter to have four boxes labeled put away, sell, donate, and storage. As you work your way through each room, pick up items and put them in appropriate boxes, making sure that any trash goes straight to the wastebasket and recyclable materials and junk mail go straight to the recycling bin. Reduce paper clutter by getting them in digital form. Clear pantries with the use of see-through bins or jars and discard original cardboard packaging. Once clutter is gone, here are the things you should remember to get you started to be on your way to getting organized. Everything needs a place so you can put them away where they belong. A place for everything and everything in its place. Bills, bags, toys, books, keys... Each item needs to have its own spot. If there isn't a specific spot for an item on a shelf, drawer, or basket somewhere, then chances are they will never be put away and will be left to sit out. In my house, it's usually on the counter. Try not to own more than one of something. I know that this may not work for everything because we all have a passion or two that calls for extras. I, for one, will buy the same style shoes in a different color because I know given my shoe size that I will have a hard time finding another pair that's just as cute and comfortable. If you're a cook, you may have a gadget that you have multiples of, which is more than you need or will use. You'll find when you start purging that you don't need multiples to ditch the duplicates. If you don't use it, lose it. You've heard this said to you when you're working on organizing your closet. If you have a piece of clothing that you haven't worn for a year, then it's probably safe to get rid of it. This works for other areas of your home as well. You know that chair that you have that you love that was ruined by your kids growing up? You kept it because all these years you were thinking that you'll have time to recover it. How long have you kept the chair? Is it still the old ruined chair? It's time to l- finally let that chair go. Some items may be difficult to part with, especially if they have sentimental value. Only you can determine what that is really worth. However, if it's weighing you down, then consider giving it a new home. Arrange items according to how frequently they are used. Keep the items you frequently use in plain sight and, if possible, at eye level. This system will make it easier for you to find things you use often and items you don't normally use will stay organized until you need them. Have a discard bag. This trick works wonders for me. Have a discard bag hanging inside or in front of your closet and use this bag every time you try on clothing and find that you need to get rid of it because it's either stained and flattering or out of style. If you've taken it off for any reason other than it's dirty or does not match, then some 
then it means something is not right and it probably will never be right. So put them in the discard bag and when the bag gets full, donate or trade them with a friend during a swap party. Don't buy storage containers until you've purged. When people want to get organized, the first thing they usually do is go to this container store and buy storage containers. I'm guilty of doing this. I get excited by the thought of organizing that I rush to the container store without having any idea of what I really need. When you purge, remember the 80-20 rule. It's the theory that most of us use only 20% of what we have. So know when purging that you are surrounded by a lot of things you probably don't need. Use your calendar. You use your calendar for almost everything you do and schedule in your life. So why not use it to give yourself real motivation to finally organize and decorate your space? Try creating a deadline for the DIY projects you have. I have a saying, if it's not on my calendar, then it does not happen. So make it happen and schedule a day or two to get your purging, organizing, and decorating done. Keep it up. Clutter does not disappear overnight. It takes time to go through your house and declare it clutter-free. You'll find that it's a vicious cycle and really never-ending. Stuff will always find its way into your house, especially when you have kids. Always take the time to always keep evaluating and editing what you are accumulating. Organizing can feel overwhelming and daunting at times. Sometimes good is good enough. Very few people have closets, drawers, and spaces that resemble those you see featured on magazines. Trust me, a lot of homes, even when they're fully organized, do not look like the photos of homes you see featured on magazines or an ad for the container store. You will be ultimately disappointed if perfection is your goal. Be happy when you come up with a space that works for your needs. That should feel like success to you when you accomplish that. Being organized can balance your life. It can reduce stress and definitely make you more productive. It can stop you from wasting time looking for things or wasting money purchasing new things that you don't need or had to buy thinking you didn't have it because you can't find it. If you make being organized your way of life today, it can soon become a habit that will reap you benefits for years to come. So, have I inspired you to declutter? Will you go home today and decide what space you want to tackle first? Will you put some time aside on your calendar to start the organization process? If you decide to start, just remember the few tips we've touched on today and you'll be on your way to an organized and happier you. Thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you'll spend time with me again next week. I'm Lenore Gonzalez and thank you for listening to Good Living by Design. This is the podcastfactory.com.